Hey, welcome. It, it, now, it's been a little while since an episode of this old truck, but now we are back in the shop with Parnell, and you guys are going to get a quick console update, and then we actually get the Red Arc Manager 30 and Red Vision system installed in my 96 80 series Land Cruiser. And I hope these videos are helpful to give you guys ideas for your own build. We tend to be an open book when we do them, so you see the good, the bad, our struggles, and many iterations while we put together the build. Now you guys, if this is your first time here, my name is Michael, this is Overland Bound. Thank you for joining me. We are on a mission to improve lives one adventure at a time. We like to give resources and information to get you out there into the great outdoors and it's springtime, so there's no better time. Download our app, it's called Overland Bound One. It's on iOS and Android. You can connect with our community. You can find places to go. And we even have off-grid, off-road mapping and navigation and events near you, all in one app. All right, let's get on over to Parnell's shop, get this thing installed. Parnell, tell the people what this is. Okay, so this is the cardboard mock-up. Yep. This is the unflexible printed version which we'll pin together and glue together today, and then we'll cut this off. We're gonna glue this on here, and that way we make sure this fits into the it mold of the car fits. and absolutely fits no problem right. with no... Now, mistakes. so we can... And uh, this was printed in this direction. So we can help folks who are watching. The reason this is super critical is because when you guys build a cardboard mock-up, which is recommended, you recommend that. 100%. 100%. Um, your cardboard mock-up is going to flex and it's going to be wrong, even yeah. if you think it's right. Yeah, it did. even though this much movement yep. makes that not fit, so we can't right. rely on it. So we built a hard model that has a cardboard overlay on it. This is just all an overlay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put this where it should go, basically here, yep. cut this off, and then put this back on, and then we're going to glue this one to here, and we're going to glue this one to here, and then we'll have the what the console looks like as it should be in the car. And then we'll put it in the car and see if we need to make any adjustments. We'll put it in the car and see if we need to make any adjustments. And once we have that done, um, I've already redesigned this whole thing. I will print it in six individual pieces, and then we'll have six of these. I'm really hoping I can use this one. <laughs> How this, long did that take to print? Uh, this took 58 hours to print. <laughs> All so, right. <laughs> this, if you see how she looks. Okay, so this is gonna go down in here. This will drop in like this. Is it do move metal tabs or whatever? Yeah, I'm gonna go on this. I'm hitting the this bulge of wire. Okay. So I can't get that in there far enough because this is too long. Like butter, fits perfectly. No directions. Okay, there's this. Um, Parnell, I'm rolling the camera. What the heck are we doing right now? Uh, we're just uh, putting this Red Arc system on the table. We're getting ready. The console is coming along where we need to get this stuff all done. So uh, 
We're reading some instructions. We we're, don't want any fires. We're gonna we're gonna poke poke it with a stick and and we're gonna learn. That's yeah, what we're, we're doing, gonna, right? We're gonna set it up on the table today so we have a good idea how the whole thing works. Great. And then once we have an idea about how the whole thing works, we can come up with a better insulation solution for the car. Great. Solar panel. That's gonna go in the red vision. Uh, do you have the app? No. Don't let this dust fool you. We just received this today. <laughs> 2022. I'm gonna get the app. No battery sensor connected. No. Yep, doesn't like that. You guys, now that we got everything laid out on the table, I want to give you the, the two minute spiel on what this thing is. Clearly there's a lot of equipment there. If all you need is a battery isolator or all you need is a dual battery setup, the Manager 30 in Red Vision is probably going to be way more than you need. However, what we're looking at is a complete vehicle management system. So the Manager 30 is the battery management system. It takes all kinds of different power inputs, your alternator, your solar panel, AC power, and then it charges any configuration of battery, lithium, AGM, lead acid, at the proper charging rate so you maximize the life of your battery, and those batteries are pretty expensive, as you know. Now, the Red Vision system is total vehicle management. You can program all your soft keys and all your accessories, your lights, your winch, your spots, your floods, your refrigerator, anything you want into the Red Vision. And then through that control panel, you can turn them on and off, but it's way more than that. It also gives you all the stats and the health of your system. So it says how much you're currently drawing, how much you're currently charging, how long your vehicle can sit there without receiving any charge until the house battery is dead. So it also isolates your starting battery. So it does way more than just isolate a battery or charge two batteries. It also has a configuration app and a control app to control your vehicle through Bluetooth. Way too much to list in this video. I'll leave links in the description so you guys can learn more about that system. Solar panel, even a small one on your roof, to never even worry about your battery going being dead. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, I want to, uh, um, I know I'll, this looks bad. <laughs> hey, we're just, we're just taking inventory. That's all we're doing. We're taking inventory. This is a very simple bench test. <laughs> Boom. Hey, you know, that's a pretty slick system. Parnell, what did we learn? Uh, we learned that zero really means one. <laughs> what else have we learned about this whole system? Uh, it, it, so far, uh, really easy to hook up, works great. Uh, I love the fact that with a little solar panel on your roof, you never have to worry about a dead battery again. Uh, yep. The solar panel they provided, I, I was shocked how good it worked to charge the battery. Uh, it's like 18 volts, like 18 volts and five amps. Yeah, yeah. Is really, what we were seeing with our conditions. Really good, the temperature yeah. sensors work. Uh, great. Not that you'll probably use those in your car, but uh, it has all the water tanks. Really easy to use. Cool. I think one of the nicest features is those little lights that come on as the fuse burns out. Right. So our choices here are to, um, this needs to sit up here. So I can either make a bracket that straddles this red arc and holds it slightly above it to allow a little bit of cooling. Although yesterday, this was plugged in for a couple hours with solar panel charging and plugged in charging the battery. 
and it never raised above the temperature it was at when it started. So I don't, for your use, I can't see this thing getting that hot. Today is a fun day because Parnell and I were just getting organized this morning. Um, we're going to put the system in, right? Yeah, we're going to get the red arc in the truck and fully functional just to make sure we don't have any little things we need to think about as we're putting it all together into the console. Uh, yeah, and uh, this looks like a disaster, but in five minutes we'll have it cleaned up and we'll have the mock-up done again. Maybe we'll take a couple pictures of that. Right, so what's in our brain, we gotta vet out and yeah. make sure it actually yeah. works yeah. in place. Okay, now what we have is we have uh, we need our components and we need an Allen wrench. And uh, over here we have the hardware and tools. So hardware and tools and wiring and all that kind of stuff. And over here is the electric chronicles. Next is something, a BLD something or other. I don't know what that is. Uh, five connects to solar panels and six connects to the house battery of the Now, Parnell, what do we have? I got the camera rolling. What we, tell folks what we got here now. Okay, we're doing the final test to see if the outputs of this red arc which i can't tell from any of the manuals are dedicated grounds to each output or they're a single ground that controls all the outputs uh, so we're going to put our output on there we're going to measure uh, the ground on one side and the other and then we'll know if we need to run individual ground wires to all the loads or if we can just use the body ground for the loads that are low current drop and for our use case the uh, the driving factor here is that we're looking at how our relays are connected in the 80. Correct. Because we want to have a dual uh, belt and suspender system, meaning yes. that if anything happens with the Red Arc system, we're still powering our accessories with the standard relays as a fallback. That is correct. So now we have our one test vehicle, this little LED light, and so we're going to go via the app. Yep, get the app. You, need, you really need the app. And they have two apps. They have a configuration app and they have a standard user app. So you need the configuration app in order to configure everything. And then you really need the user app to get all that set up as well. Oh, but I've got an old configuration in here. Output one, there it is. Okay, good. Boom. Okay, let me move the ground to the other ports. And okay. We're find out right now if that works or not. Try it again. Bing. Yes. Bing. So it is a common ground. Common ground. So the system is common ground. This helps like us. They're probably giving us these different grounds in case you were on a vehicle that did not have a common ground system like a car and you had, you were on a boat that was fiberglass, doesn't have ground, so you're going to have to run a ground wire to every load right. you have where we can use the common ground of the vehicle and we're really only now running the 10 wires. We're not running 20 wires. Just to state this again, so we have all the information in one video, we are wiring up a parallel, a parallel system in the 80. If I fry a relay, right now I have all my accessories running through relays, simple relays, I've got replacement relays under the hood. Very simple system, there's no solid state really, it's just connections, easy to replace. Um, this is solid state technology, much more complicated. The way we're wiring up the 80 for redundancy is that the relay system is gonna be hooked up. It's gonna work. The red arc system is going to be hooked up as well. If I fry a relay, the red arc system will supply power to the accessory. So I'm still good. If something happens with the Red Arc system, um, my relay will still work. So I'm still good. So there's redundancy there. Um, critical because, you know, there might not be anything wrong with the Red Arc system 
that causes an accessory not to work, it could be user error. It might be that I don't know how to use the app. It might be, you know, any one of a number of things. And I want the fallback position to be, hey, my relay still works, I'm good. Good to have redundancy when you're out there on the trail, if you're off grid. You know, if your lights just don't work for some reason, that's a really bad thing. So we'll have two systems and there will be redundancy. Parnell, you shouldn't have. Why did you go and get me that? Always a good time drilling holes in your firewall. Parnell, we don't need no loom wires. I never loomed anything before in my life. No, we're gonna loom these. Why are we looming it? Tell, well, tell just, people. It just makes it look better. It keeps them all tight together. We're gonna put a really durable shrink tubing over the ones that are outside, so they're basically in a, their own plastic case. Okay. It's just the right thing to do. And no, uh, when it's passing through things like the firewall, instead of the the insulation getting the friction and rubbing back and forth. You were actually going to put, we're going to grommet it, so it's yes. going to go through a plastic grommet. But okay. even going through the plastic grommet, it's going to have two layers of a very thick uh, heat shrink on it yep. that is essentially indestructible. Even if you didn't have a grommet on it, it would not be a problem, but right. we're going to put a grommet on it anyway. Okay. glue itself to that linen. Okay. And it will never come off. Oh, that's slick. Well, dialed into those things, it'll look clean. Holy crap, yeah, that looks great. And then this end will do exactly the same thing when we know exactly where it goes to the firewall, and we'll put even worse kind of shrink tubing on it that could just Got rotate it. on that firewall and nothing would ever happen to it. Got it, great. Hey you guys, so a little public service. Um, I've done some videos with these install gear um, fuses. We measured across the post and there's a one volt drop between the posts. So with two of these fuses, you've got two volts. So instead of charging with 14 volts of power, if you're running through two of these fuses, you're charging 12 volts of power. That's a huge drop. So I'm gonna replace those or bypass them all together and do something else with the breaker because that's too much of a voltage drop. So I'll update the video, I'll get those out of here. Install gear, not good. Okay, so now this thing has gotta come through I'm thinking here. Yeah, yeah you'll, you'll pull it right around there, that right? spot. Yeah. And then it's going to come through like this. So the uh -huh. manager 30s cables, which are these big guys, yep. are going to go here. Yep. The ground has to go here. Right. All these guys basically go right here. Okay. and then we'll pull it back into the car where this thing's coming through the hole.
Okay, some days are about uh, designing, most days are, and some days are about installing. And today we are freaking installing. We got a bunch of stuff going on, it feels really good. You got nine years of wiring in this rig, right? And so I'm pulling out all the old stuff so that we can do it right. And that feels really good too. So like all the stuff I had going to old speakers that don't exist, going, routing to the ham radio that, you know, kind of went by the steering column and was zip tied. I'm just ripping all that stuff out of there. We're gonna do it right now. Uh, and it's going really well, except for the possible exception of cutting my ham radio antenna accidentally because I got impatient. You have anything to add? No, it's going pretty smoothly so far, other than that battery terminal. Oh yeah, those battery terminals, they were crap. So uh, another thing, I already did the public service on the install gear uh, fuses. If you have bought one of these battery terminals on Amazon, I would highly recommend removing it immediately. They're incredibly bad pot metal and uh, it's the slightest chance that you tighten it on your battery enough to be tight uh, causes that. It's just absolutely terrible product. Boom, get the right gear. That's why they're $9 on Amazon. Okay, they weren't $9, but they were not quality units. And now it's powering those lights through the 120 volt. Oh really? Yeah. That's smart. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You put uh, AC, solar, or vehicle power and it prioritizes. That's, yeah. that's really cool. Parnell, uh, how'd we do it? Well, uh, we broke two of these battery terminal uh, adapters, so we gotta find a good solution for this. Because this is a great idea, it's just yeah. a very badly made part. Don't use install gear. Whatever that is. Yeah, that's install gear. So is the, the yeah, other fuse. Yeah, yeah I, I think just find, maybe someone makes one of those that's brass dropper. Yeah. So basically we have a wire that leaves here and goes directly back to the Red Arc system underneath the console and a ground that goes directly from here back to the Red Arc system. Uh, we also have a ground that goes to chassis ground here, which yep. is overkill. And then we have a sensor wire that senses the current flow and that senses the current flow through this current flow sensor, which is talking to the Red Arc system on a CAN bus. And then we have the wire loom that goes here, runs all the way around back to your old fuse panel. And we have all of the loom and everything done under the dash, so that's all permanent. So we just gotta clean up a little bit over there. And then we'll replace this wire and we'll relocate probably this breaker and put everything over there once we get that system all reconfigured at some point. But right now you're 100%, you got no more things mounted Stuff. anywhere. Yeah, it's, it's great, nice, it's very nice clean. clean. Uh, very clean and, yeah, go ahead. We left a little loop here in case this battery ever changes where the positive is over here. We'd be able to still move it around. Uh, there's a splice in the CAN bus cable down here, but you'll never need to get to that. So it's all, all pretty well squared away. Great, and on a future episode of this old truck, 
we make a better relay box. Yeah, that probably <laughs> ought to clean that guy up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> and maybe there's another spot for it, which isn't uh, isn't so uh, jammed up. I don't know. Yeah. There's not that much room under the hood here. Possible. I think the beauty about that is it's all off-the-shelf parts. You've got spares for everything, so there's yep. really nothing that could go wrong there. Yep. And even if that did fail, if one of those relays failed, all you'd have to do is take the wire off one side of it and put it on the other, and then you'd be going just through a switch, which, right. but everything would still be fused and protected. Yep. So now you've got fuse protection on the Red Arc system, and you've got fuse protection there, depending on which one you're using, yep. uh, you fuse it either way. Yep. And the Red Arc system and that are just parallel together, so whether the Red Arc is providing power to the wire or the relay system is providing power to the wire, both switches could be on, doesn't matter. It's not great. Anything. Yeah, it's great. Cool. Everything's shrink tube with an insole grip shrink tubing, so it's it's glued onto the wire basically, so it can't come off. Uh, also, that's the same thing that's done with all the the loom; it's all glued glued in place. So hopefully, it'll last for the next 20 years. Cool. Thank you for now. Anytime.